Benvenidos, damas y caballeros. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. Your hosts today. I'm Johnny. And I'm Tom. And I'm Tadeo. We are three American expats coming to you from the beautiful capital city of Buenos Aires, Argentina. This is the podcast about everything but nothing. With some expat life, news, and comedy thrown in. The second to last episode of season one. This is... The, the Velvet, Velvet Hammer. Hammer. Okay, here we are. Ooh, <laughs> my goodness! Here we are. Lucky, lucky, lucky to us. <laughs> yeah, we're lucky. We're here. I'll tell yeah, you. I mean, After this oh, week. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we ride soup day. We ride trains quite often, and we might we could have been dead. <laughs> just, just kidding. Oh, yeah. like that, Head on collision <laughs> in in downtown Buenos Aires. Two commuter trains. Ooh, my Gosh, Ooh, on that, I, I think I need to start with one of these for oh, that. Because yeah. that's, that's kind of depressing to talk about. <laughs> there we go. This okay. should help liven it what up. Are you, what are you doing, Johnny? I've got a Kilmes IPA. Okay, I've got right. a uh, Dorada, which is also mostly, yeah. from Kilmes. But it's, uh, it's a private label for Dia, the local grocery store here, so. It's, it's same stuff, different cans. Same yeah, stuff. Like a, like a kill, kill this light. That's what we call it. <laughs> kill this light. Maybe. Well, here's to it. <sighs> oh, same, okay. Fair yeah, enough. I'm on that kill this light. Mm-hmm. It's still worth... Nah, it's, 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 it, it, it works. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it works. There it is. Oh, yeah, that's nice and bitter. Mm. Delicious bitter beer. <laughs> yum. <laughs> yum. <laughs> yum. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're just trying to watch our money. You know, you can spend up to fifteen hundred on a on a regular beer, but the, somebody's always got something on sale for around a grand, yeah. which is a dollar instead of yeah. a buck and a half, <laughs> which makes a difference. Yeah. Oh, talking about dollars, the new ten thousand peso bills are out. That's true. Oh, I actually right. got two at Western Union. That only oh, two. Oh, Western yeah. Union gave me that. They're like, okay, let's like, stock out twenty. Yeah, they're kind of oh, nice. So they're kind of like. Dialing them out just a couple at a time to each mm. to each customer. You get you get two of these. Okay, we'll give you. I guess so. They're not That's... giving you you know a whole hundred dollars worth or two hundred dollars yeah, worth of. That makes yeah. sense. I, I We're dialing out a you know, couple here, a couple there. Yeah, because yeah. you're still gonna be breaking a whole lot of change if you like not. True. If you, if you get like a couple a couple oranges, a banana, a cucumber. That's only like six, seven hundred pesos. No, that's you, like that's like five, five hundred pesos. Yeah, five thousand, yeah. five thousand. You don't want to pay that with a ten thousand peso bill. You'll pay a thousand. A couple bananas is already five. That's like uh, whatever. Yeah, but you don't want to pay like a, a ten thousand peso bill for that. For yeah, because Verduas. they jumped straight yeah. from the two. They didn't go to a five. They went to the ten. Yeah. So, so now there's no five dollar bill. So it's not. So you're still gonna be doling out those thousands. Yeah, maybe some two thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything well, really costs 2,000 pesos these yeah. days. I don't think you get anything for less than two. Oh, a beer. 600 pesos. There Woo! you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, as many times as we've been to Western, I don't think I've... Maybe once I got two. We got twos once, yeah. It but was other, nice. than that, other than that, it's either fives or thousands. Yeah. The fives suck. That's ugh, that's, that's a big old brick. Money. 500, yeah. yeah that's bricks. pain in the arse. <laughs> Imagine, you know, taking a couple, a couple hundred bucks out in 50 cent pieces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just Old pretty bag. insane, you know. Jesus. Uh, that's that's okay. They're work, working, moving in the right direction. Yeah, yeah they're getting true. there. Yeah, well, the girl yeah. at the Western Union was very proud of the 10,000. She held them up to the window in Can front of me at eye height and said, oh, look, <laughs> two for you. And I went, oh, my God. And then she pulls out a big wad of thousands, you know, <laughs> like still that. walking away with a pound of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you got a treat. You get I two. Got a treat. Look what I you have for you. Two. two. Right. Woo. Oh no. See, speaking of money, um, inflation this month or last month, I should say, here in Argentina was eight point eight percent. Yes. Eight. It's Finally, gone. It's, right. it's it was ten point two last month, right? Yeah. Gone down. Yeah. One and a half percent. Okay. Single digit inflation. So if if it holds percentage. there, then the annual rate will be. Um, about 110 <laughs> percent, right? Yeah. Instead of 150, <laughs> instead of 250 yeah. last year. Right. Yeah. God, incredible. Oh no. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, they said that some of it, it's like this consumer spending has decreased a lot. People mm-hmm. aren't spending as much. They did hold off the um, that utilities service increase. I think Malay was he got smart to that. He's like, wait, if we raise oh. the utilities price right before winter, people are gonna. Revolt, Riot, yeah. Because you know, it's going to cost way too much to heat their homes and power their homes all winter. Also, so he's like, let's get through the winter first. 
I know the left moved and they had a motion in court to delay the soup day increase. They were oh. supposed to quadruple the soup day price. Yeah, so that's why it's still. So it's still at yeah. They had delayed it till the seventeenth, and then now they delayed it. I guess they're gonna delay they're it gonna two more weeks. They're gonna quadruple the soup day. Yeah. yeah, it was gonna go from wow. one hundred and twenty-five to five hundred and fifty or something. Five hundred fifty. Yeah. Okay. So somehow they got the the bus prices through, but they didn't get the. Yeah, through. but the buses are still not quite. They haven't. The, the registered system is not working, so okay. the prices are higher. But I suppose if you have an unregistered card, you pay more. But yeah. it wouldn't uh, pay the same. So it's, it's like uh, when Obamacare came in; they had the the, the online portal didn't work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody could get there. No one could get there. Right, yeah. Obamacare. right. The they're same like, kerfuffle. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, okay, you have to register your card online with your your government services, but that yeah. it didn't work. So. People were freaking out. They didn't want to pay. You know. Yeah, that's expensive. so much for their for their commutes. So suddenly too. Yeah, I mean, it, they're they're raising the uh, he's devaluing the peso nice and slow. Why not raise the soup day price nice and slow so people can get used to it? Well, that helps that's, to stop inflation. Uh, when, you, yeah, when you put the energy true. prices and your transportation prices, <clears throat> yeah, but it helps to slow yeah, inflation as well. That's fair. Less spending, but yeah. Oh Jesus. Ooh. That's that's it's it's getting better. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's not it's as bad as I it agree. was predicted. The inflation yeah. rate is is down. So inflation's down. Digits. The the energy is still low. Energy Transport's still, low. still decently low. Yeah. So it's not so bad. Right. It'll I be think. a decent winter here, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, Malay's uh, <laughs> minister of finance, uh, Caputo. Hold on. Yeah. He is really a personable guy. I saw an interview with him on television last night, and he was just talking to one of the, the big time uh, newscasters here in town. And he, he right. was just like yeah. talking to you, like, look, you got listen to me. I we're not trying to do anything bad. Also, we have to control and get the economy back. I know on. the left moved, Smiling, and they had a leaning, motion in court to motion. delay the He's a really soup nice day. Guy. They were supposed to okay. quadruple the really soup day price. Oh, so there was no place to so it's still yeah. at yeah. It's they like, had delayed the it till seventeen, like and then now they delayed it. I guess it's chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah. he's the chainsaw. It's going to go from 125 to 550 or something. It's, 550. It's so surprising. I can't believe that he made it this far, like doing what he did. Yeah, but the buses are still not the quite. Like, they haven't. There, there the registered system protests, is not working. So the prices are higher, but I suppose if you have an unregistered card, you pay more, but it wouldn't pay the same. Oh, yeah. No, he knew he was going to get pulled to the right. Yeah. The same kerfuffle, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I might have mentioned this last time. I don't know if you heard myself. But like, someone said, like, oh, yeah. uh, campaigning People Malay were freaking out. They didn't want to pay, you know, more right leaning than so much than for, their, for their president. President Malay is actually much more moderate yeah. and much more like pacing himself. Right, you got to get their attention. Yeah. So I think that's why he was campaigning for this. But what he's actually doing is a lot more calm. Well, that helps to stop inflation. When you, yeah. when you put the energy yeah. prices and your transportation yeah, but it's prices, working? yeah, it's, but it helps it's hard when it's working as well. <laughs> it's hard when it's working. Yeah. Oh, I read something that's, this that's, week. It's, that it's getting better. The state it's, it's not as bad as it was predicted. Is spending yeah. an average of three hundred thousand dollars per The energy is still migrant. low. Transport's still decently oh low. And and so it, it's not I, so bad. I mean, it was uh, a like decent news winter, because, like, some big uh, news outlet that was saying <laughs> this, and then they followed up with saying that. Uh, the overall state average for all of the states that have taken migrants in is two hundred thousand dollars. A migrant costs two hundred thousand taxpayer dollars. How? Like how? Do, how does that? Because money grabbers. That's yeah, it. Like, how is it that a single American can live off of like forty thousand bucks, barely making ends meet, but two hundred thousand goes into a, a migrant? What? Yeah, That's... it's it's, it's the a program. Racket. Oh, God. It's the yeah. rent that you charge them, so all these hotels are charging rent to the state. Oh, and if all of your right. rooms in your hotel are guaranteed, filled every night, right, oh right. yeah, I'll charge you whatever. And That's messed I'd rather up. take a migrant than take it because damn, the U.S. could use some malaying. Yeah, they need to cut sure. the fat. They need to yeah, drain yeah. the swamp. They need to use that Sharon, you know what? Cut this out. Why? Why are you charging me this much for a hotel when an average American pays this? Out. Well, this Canceling is. that contract. You. Why did you even let that program? <laughs> you don't have. A, you don't have a bureau anymore. Can't kill this better. Kill this building. Yeah. You're out. Fire everyone. You're fired. You to fire. I mean, there's a lot of anti-immigrant sentiment these days in the UK. Have you heard about this? Richie Sunak is sending the immigrants. He's trying to round them up and send them in planes to Kenya. Jesus. Or to Rwanda, I'm sorry, Rwanda. That's so inhumane. Rwanda. And that's, 
And they're not mm-hmm. even from Rwanda. Yeah, like said, oh my. But the Rwanda has a deal with the, the government, so the government has paid Rwanda billions so of what's dollars. What's Rwanda doing? They're just they're using that money willy nilly because oh my God. The, it's not the, the judges are not allowing him to send the migrants over, and it's going to cost more. It's going to cost around three hundred thousand dollars per migrant to do this. Oh my God! And instead of just sending them to school and you know right. doing it. But there is a lot of anti-immigrant sentiment everywhere yeah. in the world. Well, the same Why? article said that 20% of the population in Ireland is immigrants. Woo! Now. Gee, I mean, but I'm, I'm, it, I guess they're recent immigrants. I don't know. Maybe they're coming in for 10 years, 20 years. But I mean, that's a lot of people. In times that's of war, big. isn't that, like, normal? Well, we're, we've been... Africa, right there in the in the I think the Horn of Africa, it's been in war forever. Somalia, Djibouti, and Djibouti, yeah. Ethiopia, Algeria, even up in Algeria and whatever the, the north of Africa. So all these people are just running up, and all the famine yeah, down in the just, south of Africa or the middle of Africa, everyone's just moving out to greener pastures. Yeah, I mean that that that's happened. And I feel like every single time a big war happens, a lot of people leave the country at war for a better country. Oh, yeah, here we're living yeah, in the Ukrainians States. are here. Huh? No, Ukrainians. We, yeah, that's you, true. yeah, a bunch of Ukrainians and Russians are starting to to uh-huh. come down to Argentina. Right. Yeah, that's true. People don't so, like war. Yeah, yeah, people hate war, except for the people who are making money off of it. Everyone else is like, I don't want this. I don't want to so, die. So there's uh, a military-industrial complex, complex. Yeah. that came in after World War II. So there should be a complex for all the immigration people. The oh yeah, that's it. Stand back, grab immigration complex or something. Oh, yeah. Grab all the money. Yeah. I can't imagine yeah, what that dude. would be. Yeah. If you got any good ideas for what we can call this complex right. that the uh, that the immigrants are in, well, making uh, money off of immigrants. Let us know. Yeah. We'd, we'd be interested to know. Yeah. Put that in the uh, poll beneath you. Yeah. Maybe the, 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 just yeah, swipe up on, uh, on, if you're watching on Spotify, if you're listening on Spotify, just swipe up and you can answer this question. Hey, nice. We'll start doing that. <laughs> um, Speaking well, of Ireland and New York, because Ireland. If you heard about the Ireland, there's a Dublin, New York portal, which was like, it's an art installation. They put a, oh, yeah, basically, a, I saw this, a large I circular television screen that live streams. The people in Dublin to the to a square in New York and it lives. It's kind of like a back and forth, like a like so basically like, like a FaceTime. It's like a portal like this okay. with a camera on top, and you stand. The screen is on the inside, and you stand in front of it. and You can wave to people from Dublin in to New York. Oh, like a it's, it's like a FaceTime basically. Wow, it's a big like old a time. live time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and it lasted less than a week. <laughs> Guess what the human started doing? Uh, oh, oh, well, what? Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you damn you know, bathing apes. We, know, yeah. we, we know. all know what they started, happening. They started insulting each other, showing their asses, showing their titties. You yeah. know, just... Immediately. They're humans. It oh, and it, it became a contest. Oh, out here in Dublin, we, we're, we're, we're worse than them. We can do worse better than them. Yeah. And New York is like, oh, no, we'll... We're from New York. We're gonna fuck it up, and so they started like basically fighting about who could be the the most vulgar. The most crass. The most crass. <laughs> most crass. Yeah, there we go. God. Showing titty, showing Damn. ass, showing potatoes. Oh like yeah, potato, you potato, you. And then you know it's uh, human nature. <laughs> human what human are nature? We? Yeah. Well, Not even a week. Team. This is amazing technology. Like I, imagine this was back in the day. Like yeah. oh, God, hello. I have always maintained so cool. that anytime a new IT technology comes out. The first application of us is sex. sex. Yep. 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 And that's that it starts yeah. there and, it develops and, and then after a while you get online university courses. But not after you you're watching Stormy Daniels, you know, for the for the fifteenth time. Yeah, I'm oh god. Oh, well, they, I think they're finally gonna throw that trial out. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. There's this, this flaky porn star coming up against the ex-president of the United States, the future president of the United States. Probably. Uh-huh. And, and the, way, I, the way things are going now. Yeah, they, they threw something, one of his cases out already, didn't they? There was a hung trial. Yeah, I have, I it would probably get thrown out. It was, it, but they're, they're stalling for time. He's been in trial for, what is it, two months? One month now? Yeah, yeah. Well, longer than that. I think it's been two, yeah, yeah. two months now, yeah. Because he had to do, had to do the trial selection, do the trial jury, selection and jury selection. selection. But he's even still that, winning in the polls. Yeah, yeah. even that, he had a he had a uh, Trump had a uh, rally in New Jersey, and it was estimated almost a hundred thousand people showed up for this rally. Mm-hmm. I, it was in his time off, you know, because he has to be in court so much. But he yeah, can get yeah. out and do that, and he's uh, mm. he's leading. Whoever yeah. whoever's idea was to like 
I know there's somebody trying to, I don't know, maybe it's a conspiracy, maybe, I don't know. If, if people are trying to lock, like, block Trump up oh, that's by, good, that's good. By, um, by, like, locking him up in the courts, I think that, that master plan backfired on them. They're like, oh, let's lock him up in the courts. He's going yeah. to be so tied up with his, his trials and things, he's not going to be able to campaign. Turns out he... He, he has might even go publicity. Yeah, he's gonna run. He, he may be one of the first elected presidents that not only got elected once, fought against his, had a rematch, and then won. But he won one from a courtroom, like not even talking, just like tweeting on his phone, <laughs> like, tweeting, sleeping, yeah. talking back to the judge, <laughs> like, right. audibly cursing. Yeah, it's, yeah, like he's he campaigned by not even campaigning. Well, he I mean, he gets, he gets free publicity. That's what's always running in the news. Right. is Trump's yeah, child. Totally. And I don't think they thought that this would happen. And no it's publicity not, it's is bad publicity. Yeah, it's totally backfiring on them. There's like, we maybe should. What if we can drop all these charges against him and then make him like make a fool of himself in front of oh, people? That's again. what Biden's trying to do. That's why Biden yeah. is try, <laughs> trying this this early debate, the earliest debate since the '80s. Yeah. That's gonna backfire on Biden because he's gonna make a fool of himself. Most likely, I don't know if they're gonna jack him up on meth again, but well, this, this is old news. <laughs> what? I'm not sure if they're gonna jack him up on meth again like last time, like the State of the Union. He was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> zing. I thought it was a guy with a mask. <laughs> well, you know, that thought crossed my mind when I first heard a couple days ago that they were going to debate. Is maybe they found a good enough clone, oh, like a, a doppelganger yeah. for Biden. And he's good enough that, that it's believable. I mean, there's what, seven and a half billion people yeah. on this planet. Right. There's somebody that looks like him. Yeah. So maybe that's what they've done. Who knows? Who knows? At this point, Oh, it's gonna this, be this is a deep state secret now, which yeah. is really not very comforting. Well, still stay <laughs> tuned. Know. Stay tuned for our, our coverage of, of the debates here yes, on the Velvet true. Hammer. It's right. going to be our first video yeah. podcast. And you guys promised me a a lot, like at least a podcast of this. So I'm going to make this a show. Yeah, let's do this. I'm going to make this a show. This is going to be fun. I can't wait for that. Yep, we're just going to sit around and watch the big screen. Yeah. and let it it's fly. Gen- June 27th. June. Okay. At 9 so- p.m. All right, so that'll be for season two. So you guys will see us for season two. We're coming. Remember, thank you all for listening. This is our second to last episode of season one. We're going to take a quick break, take some time. Um, But we will see you again for season two. Let us know in the comments what you want to see. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. We're coming for you. And we're coming with Biden, with that that Biden and and Trump debate. Yeah, Biden right. versus Trump. Doing... Throw down. <laughs> gonna, I think it's gonna... a. I think it's a Thursday too. It's a Thursday. Oh, they perfect. usually debate on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Perfect. Okay. All right. But yeah, but I don't. It's this is the the earliest debate that's ever happened. Normally, they happen in September. And the second okay. thing is, it's the the first debate since 1988 that's been organized privately by the candidates instead of by the yes. debate committee. Uh, yes. That's, and, and usually they include all the candidates. They're excluding Robert Kennedy. Right, yeah. That's and they're making so their own rules. That's not fair. I mean, that's, that, that's, I don't know. There's something not right about that. I don't like yeah. that. Because this is part of the democratic process, and you're literally locking people out of the democratic process. You're locking people who want to participate, these, these runners for president, on all sides. Republican, yeah, independent, it, and they're Democratic, not even the candidates. Matter. candidates. They're not yet the nominees. Right, they have not been nominated. And they're still the locking parties. people out. Oh, oh, that's right. The first debate will be before they're even nominated. Nomin- yeah, yeah, so they're not even the candidates for their parties. So how, yet, how you know? how you, how do you think that that's democratic? To it's them? weird. Well, this locking people out. Weird election. Maybe the Democrats are trying to show up Biden as a total loser before he's nominated, oh. and to bring somebody else to the forefront to be their Ooh, candidate. This is a prediction. I want to see what happens. That, now. That's a good prediction. Yeah, I'll repeat that's that prediction. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. normally the, they're nominated and when is it like August or yeah, even uh, September. September. Even like, like September. Yeah. yeah, I thought it's September. Yeah, that's right. So wow. they've got that's early. Then of June, July, August. Yeah, they've got two months before they even nominate. Ah, so uh, I, I I don't know what's so going on with with Crazy Joe. You know, hey, just <laughs> recently Joe. he came out and tell tells the whole world that he inherited over nine percent inflation rate from Trump, the Trump administration, and the whole world says no, that's not true. That's a it was one point four percent. It wasn't nine percent until after you had been in the office, wow. Mr. Biden, right. for a year and a half. I mean, look at it, it's nine percent. No. 
It's like one point one point seven. Well, it was. Is it nine now? No, it's not. It, no, it's not now. Oh, oh, but oh. the thing was, no, Biden not. said that Trump gave him nine point two percent inflation, yeah, which did oh, that, and he no. did. Now he did. it did go later, and it was under Trump, under Biden's I mean, watch. Inflation has been slowly going up ever since they opened up the uh, printing presses years ago. This even. Like this is like end end um, end Bush early Obama time when they just start printing and printing and printing to start paying off all this debt, and the inflation comes when you print money. You're right. flooding the money. It's not actually the president's fault. Well, I guess it is because the president let them do that. But they just keep printing money, and they're still printing money. The Fed keeps printing money, so inflation is rising because the Fed keeps printing. If they stop the presses, well, maybe we'll stop inflation. I mean, there's also natural inflation in it, but still. It's like, well, no, you got to stop spending, too. Yeah, right. We, we're at perpetual war for perpetual peace. Yeah, so. like, get out of this war. Save that No, money. not this war. Every war. There's like, yeah. we're, we're, we're in Taiwan. We're in Ukraine. I think we're still, like, bombing in Iraq. We're, in, we're giving money to Israel still. Biden just approved another billion to give to them. I mean, billions of dollars. All those billions? Man. Mm, yeah, so Just, that could have been put to way, way, way better use. Yeah, they could have came, send it down here and paid yeah. all of our debt down here in Argentina. It, <laughs> right, right. I mean, instead, oh, of, it, instead of the Francis Scott, Scott Key Bridge being knocked over, they could have like taken it apart and rebuilt it. Oh, that boat is still stuck. Damn. Way, that boat is not yet freed from the wow. the, uh, the bridge. Oh, damn. How many yeah. weeks ago was that? They're, they're demolishing. They demolished the last large portion, and they're going to get the, the boat out. Damn. So that, and that's that, been weeks. They can't yeah. get through there still. They're... No, that boat's still stuck on the on the. I guess it's the pylon or something. Can, but can other boats get through? Yeah, they can get through. Oh, okay, they've okay. they've removed the rest of the bridge. Oh, okay. So that's what I was but the boat's about. still there. Damn. They just recently found the last body of the last. Uh, oh my god. Yes, and, and all I heard, I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is true. I heard that all the people that died in that incident. Were migrants. They were yeah, all, they were. Oh yeah. They're from Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico. Wow, mm -hmm. look at that. Look at Last that. Day, yeah. And then you know they're probably wearing heavy gear. So yeah. as soon as that hit as soon as they hit the water, <laughs> straight to the bottom. Filled up with water and sunk. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's when you know wearing big you're boots going down, just belt. Strip yourself as fast as you can. Take all that shit off. Oh yeah. Get I, used to, I used to I had to take a military swimming class before I, you know, had to go to whatever school, West Point, whatever. And I had to jump in the pool with like sweats on and shoes on. And it was the hardest that I did not, and I was, it, because there's so much drag on your clothes and your shoes filled with water, it's so hard to swim with clothes on and shoes on. And I had to swim with, the, and it was, it's, you build a lot of strength doing it, but if you're not used to it, straight to the bottom. Especially if you're wearing heavy, I was wearing sweatshirt, sweatpants, and some you know basketball shoes. But yeah. wearing work Full boots, combat gear. you know, wearing a wearing a, what's it called? Yeah. No work belt. These the workers. Oh, okay. They're wearing you know heavy pants, okay. oh, work yeah. boots, maybe a work belt with yeah. hammer or whatever. I don't think hammers. Damn. And Straight to the bottom. Snap. Plus the water is cold. And cold water, boom, yeah. and it's black. Oof, scary. Oh, Ooh. Enough of that. Yeah. Ooh. yeah that's, well, <laughs> I went um, dark there. Well, oh. you know what? Since we're on a dark note, moving to Argentina, and okay, I'm being a queer person. I'm gonna have to share this story because this is really quite depressing. I mean, oh yeah, wow. wow. So last week here in Buenos Aires. Oh, um, there was a hate crime against a group of lesbian women. Uh, the suspect is a 60-year-old man. He's still, he's still suspect. Not, it's all alleged at this point. But the guy did go to the roof and try and kill himself So before they caught him. So he threw a, a bunch of rags like, or a Molotov cocktail them. into a, the room of these lesbians. And, a, and they were in a boarding house. Yeah, and you know Ooh. how the, the rooms here, they have those... You know, you can kind of see in on the first level. It's yeah. an older house. Yeah. You know, they got the shutters open and there's a little, you know, gate, but you can... Yeah. yeah. So he throws the Molotov in there and the place, place goes into an inferno. The first one, I've got them, I'm going to say their names here to give them some respect. 52 years old, Miss Pamela Cobas, uh, she died almost immediately. 52 years old, her partner, Mrs. Miss Mercedes Figueroa. She got burns on 90% of her body and died of organ failure two days, two days later. Third, uh, she's 42 years old, Andrea Amarante. She suffered burns on 75 and died on, her, on the 12th of May, so I think three days later now. Yeah. And the fourth, 49 years old, Sofia Riros, is still in the hospital. 
30 people were evacuated, so it was a boarding house full of people, and seven of them are still being treated for burns. And this is a hate crime just because they're just, they're, they're lesbians and they're like protesting. And now people are blaming the government for being very anti, or for stoking homophobia, because Malay's has sort of been... Well, he, he did close down the, uh, yeah, the, about the Ministry of... Of Health, like Women's Health and Women's Culture and... Yeah, gender Studies. Gender Studies. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, there's a... There's homophobia coming from the government, even though Argentina has some of the most open LGBT plus laws in the world. Yeah, that was weird to me. Yeah, but, I, I mean, that's really, crazy. That was really sad. I almost actually started crying, like saying their names. But let their names be heard. Dude, like homos- homophobia, that's ridiculous at this day and time. Don't do that, guys. Love your neighbor, please. But that yeah. happened. Love just day, oh, yeah, just a couple of weeks. Last week. Was last week, yeah. Wow, we made, we just were, last week. Yeah. You just wouldn't think that would still be an issue anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe in Kenya, you know, or Somalia. Yeah, like, uh, Uganda, like they do it out there, yeah. Some pretty strict rules there. Yeah, yeah the or, Uganda, it's a death sentence. Yeah. If you're death. convicted of being gay, they could be... A death sentence in Uganda? Yeah. yeah. You go, oh. you, they kill you. I don't know how they kill you. Stoning or some kind of old <laughs> some medieval oh, ass. God. These backwards ass people. I don't know. Yeah, it's so just... Please, people, support, and, and for all of you out there suffering, we're out here listening to you too. We hear you. We support you. Send us some stories, whatever. But just shout out to those girls and their families. I hope you guys are doing all right. We love Buenos Aires. We love Argentina. Thank you for welcoming us. So, kiss to you. All right. I had to say that because... Okay. Yeah, all right. You know, all right. I'm like there patting my chest. My heart. My heart hurts. <laughs> I'm like, oh. That's sweet. Oh. Well, uh, also, but also in Argentina, Buenos Aires, that train, <laughs> that train, the train, which we tried to start restarting on. Oh my God, that train! Who I don't, I don't know really any of the details on this. So somebody else is gonna have to take this one. Well, just a head-on collision on a bridge over a, a main avenida here, yeah. and it's in Palermo. And so after. You see that they have all the drone shots of it, and the whole back side of one of the trains is just torn open, and yeah. you can see the some seats in there and all that kind of stuff. Like, what type of train is this? Uh, it's an electric train. So is it that, like a passenger train, cargo yeah, train? Passen- passenger, passenger train. Passenger train. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a, it, you take it uh, to go to the suburbs, and people people go uh, lots of places. It's different from the subway. So a passenger train and another passenger train. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, that's yeah. what hit. Okay. okay. Yeah. And somehow they got both of oh, both the trains got on the same track. There's there's yeah. all kinds of gear for switching and signals and all this stuff. They're still trying to figure out what happened. But if they crashed in the middle of this uh, bridge over yeah, a right major highway yeah. and now they're saying that the bridge has been compromised and oh, they might no. have to rebuild the bridge. Oh no. Yeah, because there's there's like three separate bridges of the same crossing, and if it affected all three of them, that's bad. Because I know there's a train to Tigre, there's a train to the interior, yeah. a train to La Costa. Oh my God, that would be a pain in the. Oh. God. Yeah, they had to. They they took a crane and lifted one of the very the severely damaged train off the tracks and carried it away, and then they re railed. I guess you would say the oh, okay. the uh, engine. I don't even know if the electric train type engines, but the engine car. Oh yeah, the first car. And rolled yeah. it back to the to the station. Okay. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. And now they're, they're still investigating. Was it human error? Was it was it something electrical? Was it X Y Z? We don't know yet. So. I mean, I'm not curious sure how was. old that bridge is. I mean, it does, it does look. I mean, it looks yeah. strong, but it looks kind of old. It's definitely an older bridge. Yeah. 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 Well, I hope not, because that would that would severely damage, like people's. Prospects in, well, like, they would just have to take the train a stop earlier. You know, they just have to I all guess, get to, I guess that's to the just press of Ibero and so I, uh, you take a couple. I'm, I'm not sure about this, but uh, I think uh, Malay did a lot of cutting, and I think he cut money to the Argentine train system because it is the government. It's mm-hmm. not a private entity. That's true. Now, I'll be that. Uh, having said that, uh, a mm-hmm. lot of the work that's done on the train station is done by international companies. Right. Uh, most notably, Spain has the best high-speed train system in the world. And so there are Spanish companies here that, that bring in Spaniards to work, and they also hire engineers and the such that are Argentine. And so it's, 
if he defunds that, then people are going to be laid off. And uh, I, I know that some of the projects that they were working on um, have gotten derailed, if you will. Uh. And now, <laughs> now they're, they're going to have to revisit that because uh, if people are getting messed up on uh, train crashes. Yeah, yeah there were no that. deaths. There was like a couple yeah, of severe two, injuries. Two severe injuries. Two, two severe injuries. And then that's, the, that's lots of bad. others. Not yeah, so like, not so, so bad. Yeah. Those 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 train cars were like. Well, it's just the jolt, so, I think. Yeah. You norm, it's it was just taking off from material. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it was yeah. leaving, so it, it was probably it didn't have as many people yeah. as when it went further down. So it was probably sitting in the seats, and maybe a couple yeah. fell over or something. But okay, could be yeah, that's yeah. True. Wow, Casey and I have taken, we've taken that train. Yeah, you predicted I'm, this too, Tom. You predicted a, a train crash yeah, in wow. one of the predictions. You know what? I'm going to have to look this up. Oh, yeah, we, no! I have a list you of did. everything we've ever talked about. I'm, 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 I'm going to search it. Predictions. It was, it was after, wow. after the T-grade trip, I think. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. After we took oh, the T-grade maybe. trip, we started talking about the train. There were we going had to, to take be the some uh, incidents coming up. Okay. Yeah. Because the system That's is the in date. dire need of reparation and upgrading um, a lot of electronics involved in trains and yeah. doing all that yeah. together. And if they're they're dealing with 22, 20 year old technology, they don't have the right kind of computers to make it all work. So uh, yeah, it's all this, yeah. they're going to have to come up with the money to do it, or, or privatize. Yeah, privatize the whole thing. Yeah, oh. which it used to be ages ago. That's, that's <laughs> ages money. ago. Yeah, right. Oh, even halfway point. Was that Carnegie? Did he come down here? And wasn't wasn't Carnegie the train no. guy? Uh, or was that Astor? Oh, I don't know. I don't the know the big New York mega millionaires back in the 20s. The Rockefellers, like, the Carnegies. Rockefeller, the, okay. I think, wow, I think I the oils. I should know my rail barons. Well, I want to go. I want. I should know my rail barons. Yeah. I'm surprised I don't know. I think Rockefeller was oil, wasn't oil. he? Yeah, I think he was yeah. oil. Okay, and then Carnegie, oh, he made all those libraries, so he was probably trees. <laughs> so oh, I don't know. Yeah. But Carnegie Hall. Howard Hughes was flying. I, I don't know. Someone well, had to be both. Well, like that I, 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 mean, I forgot. About that's kind of it's a good little segue down to my story. Engineering, uh, millionaires back in the, the the rolling oh actually the rolling thirties and twenties is halfway. Hold on. Speaking of thirties, oh, it's thirty yeah, minutes in. We're at thirty two. Um, this is yeah. Oh, it's yeah. yeah. time for a beer oh, break. Oh yeah, I just drink my last sip. Start mine. It's. Oh, why, for the Cumas. Why, thank you, Cumas, for this IPA. Ooh. Yes, we do appreciate it. <laughs> oh, so bitter. Mm. So bitter. So this is a story about the... I mean, Argentina used to be number one. Or was number six in the world in, in, in the economy. But I have a story about this wonderful building called the Kavanaugh Building. So it was built in uh, 1936, commissioned by Karina Kavanaugh, who was an Irish millionaire, with a story. This is her, her backstory and the story about this building is amazing, so stay tuned for part two. I'll tell you that later. But uh, it, when it was built, it was the tallest building not only in Argentina, but in all of Latin America. And it was the tallest building for 11 years at 120 meters. And not only that, but it was the tallest building in the world of its kind because it was built with a concrete, uh, a reinforced concrete structure. That means okay. it was tallest in all of Argentina. <clears throat> I mean, that was Argentina was number one in the world. Wow. I guess before that, they were just piling up bricks. <laughs> yeah, I guess mm. there's, yeah. There's, oh, there's yeah. a building in uh, downtown That's Cincinnati, true. and I think Chiquita Bananas is in that building. <laughs> Chiquita Bananas. Yeah. That, that's the headquarters of Chiquita Bananas. Maybe, Cincinnati. yeah, then piling up stones, like, the, like this building. Yeah. It's a bunch of pile, it's a they, pile of stones. That's right. They start out uh, the, the bottom of the, of the, uh, so of the actually, building. They, it's like six or eight feet wide of, of bricks that they pile. And so then they, as the building goes up, it gets a little narrower and narrower, so it's like a spine. And so you have to uh, really support it on the bottom. 
So what you're saying, this was yeah. the first concrete, 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 and it's the tallest building in Latin America. Yeah, it was no, no it was the f- tallest in the world. Okay. Number one in the world was Argentina Damn. in 1936. In 36. Wow. Wait. Argentina and had the tallest building in the world in 1936. No, not in the world. The tallest reinforced concrete building, building. in the oh, world. Okay. And this is back when, before the book was written on doing this. So the technolo- technological feat that this was during that time, the, the engineering to calculate the wind resistance, the, the bearing capacity of the ground, all these things, genius. Wow. And it was done here in Argentina. Wow. wow. Look at that. Like... What? So th- that's what that's what Millet is talking about when he's like, we used to be one of the most beautiful, rich, wealthy nations on the planet, and somehow now we have no no readers, no mathematicians. Yeah, the engineering feat, yeah, like, incredible. Wow. Okay. If you see so this, this building, he, this it's, is what he wants to get back to. It's a massive building, and it's made of concrete. It's they had to build it from the outside in. We'll we'll show you on uh, you can video see the pictures coming yeah. up on the all right. What check. Like and follow our Instagram and socials, and you will find video of this. We will show you. And that building was 120 meters tall. The Burkina Faso, the tallest in the world right now, eight times taller than this building. It is oh. that is huge. <clears throat> I don't even know the Burkina Faso is huge, but the Burj Khalifa. That's it. The what, a Burkina Faso? Oh Burkina my God! Like I a, have to say that again. A, I'm just gonna cut the whole part out. <laughs> No, so we, uh, that's the that's the terrorist group. Yeah. So the Berg no, the Berg yeah. Burkina Faso is a it's a country. It's a country. Yeah. So the the Berg really? the Berg Khalifa, Khalifa the Burj yeah. Ka- the Burj Khalifa is eight yeah. times taller. Yes. That yes. is the Burj. Yeah, amazing, like, right? Burkina Faso. I was like, that's I like, like that. That's a country or a city or something. Like that. Yeah. Um, the anywhere. Burj Khalifa. Yeah. yeah. So Karina, <laughs> is, the building is thirty-one floors, and she used to she lived on the fourteenth floor. And why would you say, well, I would live on the top? But the 14th floor, after the 14th floor, it starts to get smaller, like a thinner structure. And so she had all of the 14th floor, and then there were the terraces on the outside of it. So she had a 360-degree view of the whole city. Wow, cool. And the, the, uh, the square meters of the inside was the same as her terraces. That, Damn! That had, she, had a big house. she had enough footage on her terraces to equal her inside space. She had enough yeah. outside space to equal her inside Ooh. space. I mean, the, the, it is a gorgeous. Holy sh- <laughs> the building looks kind of like the flat. Wow. I mean, it's, it's an amazing it's, building. It's, so it's like it's like having like if you have like a gigantic house and you have the equal size as a garden or something. Because yeah. she is living in a uh, a high rise. She doesn't have like a ground floor like. Yeah, there's house. trees and stuff, oh, and God. oh, it's wonderful. It's amazing. Okay. So now I want to get to the juicy part. Why did she build this building? So Karina, a woman scorned. You know, as a scorn. So she was from a wealthy but not aristocratic family. Probably see where I'm going with this. She fell in love with the son of a wealthy and aristocratic family, the Ancherenas. And so the Ancherenas they lived in what's now known as Palacio the San Martín. Ancherenas are Argentinos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, she was a. I guess she was an Irish immigrant. Made her money, I think, in boats. But the Ancherenas lived in what's now known as Palacio San Martín, which is a beautiful oh, yeah. palace. Uh, we would call it a mansion these days. Huge, ornate, beautiful. And across the way from their house, they had built, I mean, you know, a couple hundred meters, a thousand maybe meters away, they had built this wonderful church facing their house so they could walk out of their house or their mansion and see this church. And so when they turned Karina down for this marriage, she said, no, hold my purse, hold my poodle. Uh, 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 uh. And then she, built, she bought the land right across, right in front, not... 30 feet away from the church and built this huge building right in front of it so that they could never see their church again from their house. And she said, uh uh-huh, how you doing? And so now when they look out of their house, they see the largest building of its kind in the world and Karina staring down at them saying, aristocratic? <laughs> how you doing? You know, like the woman scorned. God. She damn, she came back with a vengeance from mm-hmm. hell. Yeah, she and the shade that is on that church, the shirt, oh. the church is just covered in shade now. Oh yeah, because she built no it sunlight. right in front of the church. Damn, it sees Whoa. no sunlight. Oh, yeah. it's probably cold and damp and, and she just moldy. Took all the- <laughs> <laughs> it, like all the all the humidity can't get out, and it's all she probably was a bad rusty bitch. now. Oh, and they blocked all the wind off. So- you don't have like nice blowing trees. It's still a nice little church, but it's not as nice as it could have been if it had, you know, a view. 
Wow. She built this huge, not 30 feet from the front of the church is the building starts. My goodness. And the house is, you know, way, the, I mean, the palace that they lived in is, you know, further up the way. But oh my God. it's a beautiful area. It's like right on the hill. You get to overlook the rest wow. of the city. That is pretty funny. Oh and she God. lived most of her life in there. You know, Damn. a woman scorned. She was 39 years old at the time, a little bit older, but... Oh, wow. wow, that's a good age to have like that much money to build the tallest yeah. building do, do of its kind. Do you know where their money came from? I think it came from shipping and boats. I don't know if they, they built boats or they did shipping because the building looks kind of like a boat. If you've yes. seen the gridiron, I, I've seen, yes, you sent that yeah. video. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it, it, I think it, she was in boating or shipping or oh, oh. Yeah. something of that nature. But she also owned ranches and other things, you know, you know how the rich play. And it's like games of the rich. Like if you have that many millions of dollars, you can play a game against your rich friend. Like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to block off your view of your favorite church that you built down the street. <laughs> you love me? Yeah, it's just like Christ. the amount of money these people had, the richness back in the 30s. Oh, my God. And that was right before the war, yeah. Wow. That's just a funny story. I mean, uh, there's so many, there's so much history in all these little, these houses. I mean, and, I mean, there, there is a, this thing like of, of, I mean, not even as just as rich people like building their big buildings, but like as these like older buildings, there's a lot of older buildings here in Buenos Aires that are having tall buildings built right next to them and blocking off all their sun. True. Like they, they're yeah. not, I mean, it's the same thing that happened to this church, except it's a, like someone's yeah. little, little row house or it's something. Like, it's like that movie Up. Remember, there's like an old yeah, man, he's like a holdout. We Pixar. call them holdout houses. Mm -hmm. So the one person will stay in the house and uprise a big high rise on this side, a big high rise on that side, and yeah. oh, there's a, just there's living a in the darkness. There's a casino in Atlantic City like that. Uh, it, it used to be, they got one guy wouldn't sell out, yeah, and so it. they built a whole casino around him. He'd Damn. go out into his backyard with his tomato plants <laughs> and everything, and he'd see, you know, six stories of, <laughs> of gamblers. <laughs> He wasn't going to sell out. Wow. wow. It's the holdout houses. Sit, oh. Sitting in the living room, a 1,200 square foot house with, with a lady, you know, right. a little lady. We're going to sit here and have a hamburger or something. You're going to hear all the little games, the slot machines all night. There's a lot of those around here in Buenos Aires too now, yeah, little, and it's little, sad because they take all the light away. Yeah, once all the light's gone, all your everything is just it's just it starts to mold, yeah. or, or, or trees will start to grow, plants will grow in your. Yeah. Head. Well, there's it's a just, neighborhood in Richmond. The water doesn't just evaporate because it doesn't get any sun. Mosquitoes. Oh, mosquito. Yeah. Okay. There's a neighborhood in Richmond, Virginia. It's called Church Hill, and it is Church it's Hill. claim to fame. It's it's a very nice neighborhood, old 1880s houses, 1890s houses. And that's the uh, place St. John's Church is in Churchill. And that's where, uh, who was it, Patrick Henry delivered his give me liberty or give oh. me death speech. Oh, okay. And so a quick aside, during the summer, they do a reenactment of this every Sunday afternoon in the church. Well, there's all these beautiful houses that are on a ridge overlooking the James River. And it, the it, James River isn't that close. It's maybe a half mile away, but they're tall enough that they can see it. And so all the developers were coming in and wanting to build these high rises all along the James River and was going to block these people's view. Now, I haven't been to Richmond for five years, but I, I don't know if they ever got any of that stuff built. But the community association was really fighting it for their houses. I mean, there's... There, isn't there a sign they're hanging all over yeah. Palermo right now? About no to the new um, the urban city, code. Urban code, yeah, because a lot of people, like, like, same thing, like, they're trying to build these big old high rises, high -rises and everyone's like, we're, we're trying to keep our, like, little short, you know, you cultural, nice you cultural know. little, little areas, or zones. And a lot will. of those high rises, at least in Palermo, they don't even go to people who live in them. They, yeah. people will buy them and then turn them into Airbnbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they one of our friends does that. And I'm like, damn, I didn't know she did that. Now Cause you can make more people. money, but yeah, it's easier to, you make, you know, $500 in a week right. on Airbnb and that's a whole month's of worth of rent. Right. If you're renting someone uh, plus that's that's that's, that's one that's one apartment that can't be rented to someone who needs a house yeah. right right well i live in a building uh pretty much downtown and it's eight years old 15 stories and it probably has the the footprint of maybe five or six houses or buildings that were there before it's a pretty good sized thing and so I, you always sit there and you wonder well, what was here nine years ago 
they had to come in and tear a bunch of stuff down. And there's some beautiful buildings on my yeah, block. Yeah. Now, the one I'm in is not. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice building. It's modern, you know, right. and all that. Like, something's got to come down for that to go up. Something had to come down for that to go up. Damn. Yeah. Ooh. ooh oh. I mean, that is urban. That that is that like natural urban revival that yeah. happens. You it's, know? it's kind of a gentrification, but I think gentrification more refers to displacement of of uh, classes of people. Right. There's yeah. there's there's like normal urban revival, which is I think that's the term for it, urban revival. Mm-hmm. It's when as as places get old, just the natural flow of people and the flow of wealth as businesses get richer and richer in their zone, they start expanding into different zones. But it's, it's not about displacing people and about hurting. That's just that's proper gentrification. When someone so rich comes in and just knocks everyone out, buys up all their land, kicks them out of their houses, uses strong arm techniques to get them out of their homes, then builds something on it and tries to cash cow it. That's not urban revival. That's gentrification. Natural urban revival has is a much more soft, slow process. Yeah, that happens here. Well, Look at okay. San Telmo. I mean, everyone yeah, used to live in San Telmo. Now they, well, has, they moved to Palermo. It they moved has to, to happen, or else we'd still be living in caves, carved well, yeah, the side yeah, it's of the hills. natural and it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. That's how you get like some really nice homes from the '30s, but some from the '20s, but then others from the '50s, and then others from the '90s, all in the same block. And then one day, one will go down and get changed. You're like, oh, well, we loved it while it was here, you know. And then because it's just it's natural. But at least they're all there on the same block. The whole generation, many generations, can be represented on one block naturally. Uh, you guys studied this. Is I don't know. Some of these buildings of will never get. Some of these buildings will never get torn down. You know, yeah, the it's Palacio stand like San Martin. There's the Palacio right. Sarmiento. We used to hang out like in a park in right. front of Palacio San Martin. They're re, they're re, um, right. revamping it. Re- yeah, re- rebuilding. Rebranding. Uh, they're renovating. renovating. They're renovating the outside. Right. The facade now it looks gorgeous. It's yeah. like wow, we have to go to. The, but it used to look kind of dilapidated. I mean, and that's I and mean, that's when the people come in and like you know what we really like this building. This piece is this is a piece of historical. This is a really historical. And then they just mark it as a historical building. And now by law it can't be demolished. It's it's got to be maintained by someone. Probably Palazzo Barolo might be that one day. Well, oh. it's it's one hundred is... years old. In nineteen twenty three, it opened up, so it just had its centenary. Yeah, right. And. Uh, you know, Barolo brought the cotton gin from Italy to so here, Argentina. Argentina. And that's how he made his money in the late 19th century. Oh. So he built this building. But you know, we're, we're sitting here and, and the thing's 100 years old and it's got some pr- plumbing problems, you know. Yeah, sure. A lot, a lot of the, some of the faucets don't come on all the way oh. and the drains back up a little bit. Um, it's what, 27 stories tall? As a- Yes, I, 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 think, don't, I, don't, I, I think Barolo is 27 stories tall, and it's it was 14, uh, no? at the time it was the biggest. It's even more than top, oh. but they're not full floors. This is yeah. 1923. It was the tallest yeah. building in uh, Buenos Aires, oh. and the first really skyscraper, quote unquote, that he built. Mm. But it's so this Kavanaugh came along. <laughs> yeah, until Kavanaugh yeah. came along <laughs> in 36. Yeah. 36 <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah. you know the thing is. Uh, that it's, it's historical here, so they can never bulldoze it down. They can never put the wrecking ball to it. Yeah. But sometime, at some place in the future, some kind of company and people are going to have to come in here and replumb oh, yeah. the whole yeah. building. It's, it's 100 years old. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. And, and take care. I mean, the elevators are, are wonderful, Thanks. but they don't work all the time. You know, right. sometimes they, they yeah. take a break, but they're, they're beautiful. But, you know, just the infrastructure of a building is huge. And I'm sure they've done a lot of uh, electrical updates in that hundred years. Sure. But still, who's going to pay for that? Yeah, oh yeah. Who's going to come in and say? And you know, there's probably a lot of asbestos in this in the basement because asbestos was the way to to insulate those water tanks at the time. I have no idea if that's true or not, but. Usually in this era of, of uh, construction, that's what they did. You know, they, they packed six inches of asbestos all the way around the water tank to keep it warm. And all the pipes are wrapped. You got a, you got a, you know, a one inch pipe and it's got six inches of asbestos wrapped around it. And it's not even wrapped. It's just, it's like molded on there like a plaster, like a cast. Right. 
Are the pipes even? Are they lead pipes too? Are they? Uh, oh yeah, the pipes the are probably is, lead too. Oh yeah, lord. Uh, so it's it's going to be a big big deal, and I don't know who's going to pay for that. Yeah, I guess how can you, how can you ever really justify? Someone's going to have to buy the building. Your return. You have to buy the yeah. building and rent it out. Well, it's for the love of art, I guess, because mm-hmm. it is a beautiful building. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, Nick and I was—I I, I can see them knocking down some of these walls and turning these four by fours into like ten by. Oh, you yeah, know, make the offices and bigger, make bigger yeah. offices. Put some really good wiring through. Make it much more Wi-Fi friendly. Maybe even put fiber optics in so you can get a good cable connection to your internet. Well, this I place mean, could. Just, the building itself is sound. They just need to modernize it. Like these little four by four offices, this is from the twenties. We need big ass offices where we can have our whole team working, have some doors in between. Yeah, open floor plan. Kind yeah, of. open floor plan. Yeah, that, that's it. That's. But that's what that's a modern idea. I mean, that, that wouldn't be that difficult. No, no. They, they 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 have the structure of the building on the outside with a lot of uh, I beams going through it, and a lot of these walls in our office here are just basically uh, cinder blocks. Yeah, you know, so you, you, a, you can knock that out. Right, a good architect to make it look nice, a good engineer to make sure it's feasible. Boom! This whole place, I think they can make a lot of money out of it, and that's a little bring some modernness to an old. It's like it's like updating a. Like a like a like a new take on the lobster thermidor. Like oh, old you know, old lobster thermidor, new lobster thermidor. Same thing, slightly oh. different flavor. On oh, the what? outside looks what? on the what? outside what? it's all like it's it's all like oh, what old, did you say? But on the inside, it's modern and fresh and new. You guys like lobster? I feel like they're con- no, they look like cockroaches no. to me. It's uh, it's too much work for me and cra- and. Crabs too. I can't eat they crab look, legs. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. just so much it's work, and yeah. you get a little tiny morsel out of it. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and lobster it was so expensive. I just can't do it. So expensive for so little work. It used to be the food of the poor. Wow. The poor blacks used to go collect it, and they started making it, making real good food, and all of a sudden it became a thing of the rich. Because they are kind of like the bottom feeders of the sea. They they like they look like cockroaches to me. They have these long antennas, and these the body looks like a. Ugh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a crustacean. Ugh. It's a crustacean. And, and Do they really scream when you put them in the boiling oh, water? No, it's the 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 temper <laughs> the boiling water instantly creates pressure on its shell and the oh, it starts okay. steaming. Okay, so they do sense. scream. No, they Their bodies scream. Scream. It's just the pressure. Well, it's the only sound yeah, they ever right. make. They don't scream through their mouth. No. Yeah. no, no. I don't think they, they, have a mouth. they don't even have vocal cords. <laughs> yeah. have you vocal can't cords. make sound underwater. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's just, it's like, it's like make a, sudden yeah. heat hitting them and it creates a whole bunch of pressure. And like, oh, my favorite is scallops. Oh. Giant sea scallops, you know, the size of a 50 cent piece and about an inch oh. thick. Oh, I go crazy. Sea scallops with sauteed that. in butter. Mm-hmm. Sauteed or. Yeah. How do you cook those things? I don't know if I've had a scallop. I need to try a scallop once. You saute it? You just saute it? Oh, no, no, you 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 broil it. Oh, Oh, there's so many. You put butter on them, you put them under a broiler, and it's wonderful. I mean, every time I see you with Gordon Ramsay, you fucked up the fucking scallop. I want a perfect scallop. And he goes, space that motherfucker. (laughs) Then I put the scallops and then take it out. I was like, scallop. Cook perfectly. Let's get this straight. The scallop is per- cooked perfectly. <laughs> he loves his pan seared scallops. But that's 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 yeah. Gordon Ramsay. I don't know. Yeah. That's mm. good. And mussels. I like mussels too. Ooh. Oh, mussels are mussels, fun. Oysters, mussels. Are oysters. Good. Oysters are good. Oysters are delicious. Good. I've had broiled oysters in New Orleans. Oh, had raw, butter, raw, lots raw. of butter, and broiled. Oh, <laughs> oh, Those one are, time back back. Back when, when I was married, okay, my wife and I went on kind of second honeymoon. We went down from Atlanta. We went to uh, Pensacola, Florida. Actually, it was Florida. Destin. Pensacola. Destin is the name of the place. It's right on the sea. And there was a bar there. At the time, you could buy a dozen shelled oysters for a dollar. And you could buy a draft beer for a dollar. This is back in the late 70s, right? Oh, wait, is that what oh, we're wow. paying right now? <laughs> yeah, no, it is. That's true. And we sat there and we ate, uh, in a weekend, we probably ate 20 dozen oysters. Damn. Oh, it was so wonderful. Oh, wow. Just a dozen oysters for a dollar? There was, an, there was an oyster. There was a, they did an event at the, at the Na- Smithsonian, Na- Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. 
and I, I was working the uh, retail side at the time, so I had to host it to sell all the shit. I was like sort of like supervising my crew. I was like, okay, you guys set up your shit over here. And then afterwards, they had all these oysters left over. They're like, you can have them. So I just slurped up. I don't know how many I ate. I got full off of oysters. They had Atlantic oysters. They had all the oysters from everywhere. And I was like, and I'm like, and I just ate oysters There's all night long. I'm like a good raw oyster. I'm like, what? Oh. I had, it was my first time ever having an oyster awesome. and last time. I've never had an oyster since, but damn, it was a weird, strange, but delicious thing. I haven't had those for decades, I don't think. I don't think <laughs> oh, yeah. They got so expensive. You know, oh, you go yeah. someplace like Red Lobster or Applebee's oh, or which Chili's. Which no longer exists, by the way. Oh, by the way, <laughs> goodbye, Red Lobster. Bye, Red Lobster. Sorry to hear about that. Ciao. <laughs> what oh, the? No. What did they do wrong? How did that even happen? No more seafood for the common man. Yeah, wow. Damn. Mm. Cutting back. Everybody got cut back. Well, wow. is that predictions time, or you got something else to say here? No, I think it's. Uh, I think we're at that time. I think it's pretty close. Yeah, because we're like yeah. running on five minutes out. Who's got a prediction? Does what, what, what was my prediction a while back? Oh right, you had one. Uh, there was. Mm, mm, oh my! This was in the pregame before we even started our our cameras. I mean our our microphones. What, the train prediction? The train crash? Well, the train, no, that ta- that came true. Uh, okay. You did have one. I should have written it down. But yeah. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it was a pretty good one, too. It was. I'm like, well, oh, yeah. Was it about the way? Okay, well, I'm trying to even think it, of my own. If it, if like, it comes true, I'll try to come up with another one here. Let's see. What uh, can I predict? What yeah, can I predict? I'm, yeah, I'm thinking, too. Uh, we didn't really go over anything well, much predictive. Uh, Let's see, I've got a prediction. Um, there's this political party in Germany called Al- Alternatives for Deutschland. And they've been ruled a extremist right-wing party. I think something is going to come out of Deutschland. Something is starting to, to boil and fester in Deutschland. And I don't know if it's going to be good, but I think something's going to come out of there. Even, even beyond the uh, the skinheads and the neo Nazis, yeah. something's yeah. always been festering in Germany. Oh, shit. It's, it's, the, I think it's I think it's a fester all the time. <laughs> fester, oh. fester, fester, fester. <laughs> they're they're coming back out. The Careful skinheads now. are coming back out of Deutschland, <laughs> and maybe they'll. I don't. I don't know. That's enough, enough on that because there's a bunch of war in the world and everyone's getting their little piece of it. Oh no. Oh lord. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a. I don't have much of a prediction this week. Um, yeah, I don't. Well, okay, I, don't then. I, I don't have any. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm coming up blank. I, I think we recorded this. Uh, my prediction earlier on. Okay. I oh yeah, we, we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you want, if you want. <laughs> If you want to hear my prediction, it was that's what it was. It was was Biden. It was Biden. Oh, we found it. We found it. It was it was putting Biden in an early debate so he can embarrass himself and get himself out, and they can choose a new candidate. Oh yes, that okay. I'll I'll say it again. Okay, so uh, the whole reason for the the debates coming up, it's it's being spurred. My prediction by the Democratic Party because they want to go out on June 27th and show Biden to the world so that their Democratic Party and the world can say, uh-uh, we can't do this. And, mm-hmm. it, and then they'll have time to find another candidate, another candidate to take on Trump. That sort of makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. 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 Let's watch that happen, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, this is unprecedented since it's yeah. been, what, 30, 40 years, 30 yeah. some odd years, almost so, 40 years. And, and the reason they didn't agree to, um, to debating before had to do with the National Debate Commission, is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. They just didn't like all the rules. And so this is being hosted by CNN, right. which is yeah. completely uh, separate. We went over that. Right. So that's, uh, yeah, that. that's my prediction. I'm glad we, thank you. That works. Yeah, that's yeah, what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's. That's Either a, that that's or there's going to be a sniper on the sixth floor of the uh, oh. the book depository <laughs> in Dallas. <laughs> I mean, no, I didn't say that. I mean, no, no, no. It just dare they keep him after that. I mean, I don't know how he Biden's going to go up against Trump in a debate and survive. Like like you said earlier, you were, not in the podcast, but before it was. It's like a, taking a, a knife to a gunfighter. Or yeah, right, right. Taking a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. what? This is this, this is no contest. He's gonna lose. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Like the man can't even hold a thought in his brain for more than a second. Okay. And then, anyway, so. 
Okay, so the other yeah. the other half of that prediction is that the the doppelganger for Biden uh-huh. oh, yeah. is going <laughs> it's to, gonna go debate. to debate. Yeah. He's going to go public about yeah. six months after that or two months after the election and say, yeah. I was the doppelganger. I was the doppelganger. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. wow. That was sick. Jesus. Oh, Lord. God help us all. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Each and every one. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Mercy on our souls. Maybe, maybe. Okay, my prediction then is: okay, we'll wait this one out. Maybe in two election cycles from now in the United States, there might be a Malay type chainsaw asshole that comes in. I think you guys, you're gonna, you guys are gonna need it in a That's couple. That's kind of Donald cycles. Trump. He's the drain the swamp. Yeah, but he, he's, he's, he's not. He's not I mean, he's 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 hardline. He'll pave the way. But we, they really need a chainsaw massacre. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like, I like that. Just right. They really do. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for listening to our mm. second to last episode of season one. We will see you again very soon for season two. And please, definitely listen to our season finale. We're going to have a special guest, and it's going to be lovely. You will, I, she will touch your heartstrings. But anyway, as always, thank you all for tuning in to today's episode. If you like what you hear, and especially if you didn't, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. Follow us as you will. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another and almost done episode of The The Velvet Velvet Hammer. Hammer. Hey, have a great week.